And that's one of the things that I wanted to riff off you guys with a little bit. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about the singularity thing. That was one of the themes I wanted to get into and what that is. And um, so one of the reasons I want to talk to you guys about it is because I, so this thing called the singularity has been around, uh, Graham Snooks it, it coined the term, or at least takes credits for coining the term, I don't know, back in the 1980s. And basically he tracked certain kinds of accelerations in particular kinds of frames that would then create a phase shift and a jump into a whole nother layer okay, of processing. Uh, and then Ray Kurzweil took that um, view and zoomed back a little further than Graham Sooks did, and then uh, created a time map of various epochs, okay? Uh, the energy epoch into the matter epoch, into the life, uh, and then what he called the brain epoch, what I would call mental behavior epoch, uh, and then into the human cultural epoch, and then the technological epoch, and then he then was thinking about the artificial intelligence epoch um, that we would pass through at the level of what then this becomes the technological singularity. Uh, he's second in command at Google. He writes the singularity is near in 2005 um, and starts Singularity University, okay? Uh, and so this is in the culture somewhere and this is the technological singularity, which is the idea that we'll build artificial intelligence that supersedes humanity. That's what the, he interpreted. That would be the new jump into a totally new phase shift. That was Ray Kurzweil's frame of reference. Um, Max Borders came along and said, no, I think it's a different kind of thing. What's actually happening uh, is humans are hooking up and what's actually gonna emerge is a social collective intelligence, okay? So then Max Borders is then called the social singularity will be some meta um, shared intelligence that emerges beyond culture in a particular way that creates a global, you know, it will be bottom, bottom up, but what will happen is a mindset uh, that transcends the old cultural mindsets and becomes some sort of global social mindset, all right? So I thought that was kind of cool that you have a social uh, singularity and a techno sing technological singularity. You guys run the techno social podcast <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. as, an, as an intersection, you know, and think about ontological design and religion, you know, and ways of embodiment uh, in, the, in the 21st century. That's a, that's a cool parallel to me. Um, and the last thing I'll say then is that, you know, uh, I tell people my narrative. So in, you know, I got stoned one night in 1997 and the tree of knowledge popped out of me. Um, six months later or so, when I'm really thinking about, well, what the hell? I drew these goddamn cones. You know, you start like, what are these fucking cones? <laughs> Why do they speak to me intuitively? Um, and over time, it was like, wait a minute, there's, took me a while to formalize it clearly, but I knew that it had something to do with information processing and communication, okay? That life that the reason I drew the cone at life and in mind and at culture had to do with the emergence of novel systems of information processing, genetic, cellular, nervous system, animal behavior, and language, <laughs> and the human mind, intersubjective mind connection to build these systems of justification. Well, once you track that, then all of a sudden you see very clearly, fuck, what happened in the 20th century, okay? What we definitely did do is we laid down a totally new network of information processing and communication. Our material culture now was bridged to fuse with us in a totally different way. So this cup before is pretty inert when I'm not doing anything with it. So it has forwards me a way of drinking and all of that. But this damn computer, if I give it problems, it will spit shit back in and out, especially if we build robots, we build the internet of things. We have built a constantly dynamic complex adaptive landscape, at least, that is mediated then by uh, digital information processing uh, and gives rise to the affordance of a virtual reality um, that is, you know, outrageously different and potential creates all this potential, also creates all this chaos. And the tree of knowledge version was, well, shit, we're never going to be able to control that, <laughs> okay? But it's also the case that it's going to afford us a huge amount of potential either for chaos on the one hand or potential totalitarianism on the other. I worry deeply that, oh my God, if you get a China kind of, or worse, North Korea kind of structured top-down control, somebody could regulate all of that and be in masterful control of you now in a 1984 way. So that was terrifying. Um, so what my vision was of the fifth joint point, which is like we're channeling through this idea, um, and, and that what's happening is that human cultural intelligence is now gonna get actively dynamically linked with material culture through the digital, and that's gonna explode the landscape. So what the tree of knowledge then says is, well, shit, we have to get our social selves 
aligned with our grounded nature, our best way to cultivate this in a complex, adaptive, sane way is to anchor it at some level in a coherent understanding of the human in nature so that that creates a stacked robustness rather than say the enlightenment dream of, oh, here's a rational opportunity. We'll deconstruct, de you know, elevate ourselves above, create some transhuman, you know, download ourselves into a computer and take off, you know, what the fuck, you know, that's a very, so anyway, I just thought that that was a cool intersection. The last thing I'll say, and then I'll shut up and see what you guys want to say about this is three years ago or two years ago, I was reading um, this, uh, paper on a singularity. I'll read a few things by Korotayev. He's a Russian, okay? Um, and what he looked at then were these, uh, well, how do you know a singularity is happening? Well, what you do is you measure the time until the next big event, okay? And what happens when a singularity is approaching is that the time to the next big event shrinks. And then you, that creates a curve and the singularity is when the time is basically to the next big event is happening with such regularity that it then goes to infinite. Um, and what he showed was uh, he compared Kurzweil's graph, which Kurzweil used to, 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 to say, hey, the, two th the singularity should be at 2045. And he showed that actually it wasn't just an exponential that Kurzweil used, but it was a hyperbolic exponential. And what that meant was that, that then he could fit the line a lot better and it would cross at 2027, okay? not 2045, because it was actually accelerated at the tip. He then found this other Russian guy, Panov, Alexander Panov, who completely independently of Kurzweil, because he's, they, wasn't, they weren't in the same intellectual, and Panov's a Russian, had a whole nother data set looking at major events, which were only very loosely related to Kurzweil's. Most of them had all these different. Well, he applied the same equation to Panov's data set and gets a curvature of crossing the singularity at 2029 with a regression curve of like 0.994 on the one hand and 0.996 on the other, okay? And so, which is in social science, that's like on a simple mathematical macro level thing, you know, that's not shit that we see. Um, yeah. So to me, uh, you know, when you speak about Daniel Frager, Daniel, when you're talking about the, you know, there's a machine force that is somehow in some weird macro level self-organizing process um, is pulling ourselves in a particular way. That's a, to me, that's an empirical, I mean, scientifically empirical slash spiritual thing. Um, and, and I find this intersection, this was, this was enormously moving to me. The idea that independent of me, and then I find my little baton of energy sort of plugged in to be oriented toward trying to cultivate a revolution that's going to now cross over in 2028, okay, is, is really bizarre uh, to me. And if we took the whole cultural, now if we go back to what the tree of knowledge identifies as the culture person plane of existence, okay? And then in terms of sort of my meta framing of meta modernity, here's what it looks like. So 50,000 years ago, we have the oral indigenous system now in full swing, okay? So that's 50,000 years. We then jump up by a factor of 10 to 5,000 years and we get bronze age into axial age, traditional formal sensibility, okay? Then we jump a factor of 10 to 500 years ago, you get the Renaissance into enlightenment, okay? And the emergence of modern science and modernist sensibility and the capital labor relations that go global. Mm. Then 50 years ago, you get a postmodern critique, okay? And just about five years from now, <laughs> we're literally on a line to transcend culture potentially into the beginning emergence through a fifth joint point of a digital meta-cultural, meta-modern, digital virtual space. And there's a goddamn fucking empirical line that is like, can be identified in relationship to that. That always gives me a little chill. I love so, how yeah. excited you are by it. I, <laughs> I think it's a beautiful vision and I really hope it happens. I'm, it will. The, the thing I hold oh. is this pessimism. I think that- mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I, 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 the, this, this totalitarianism that we fear mm. is, is to some degree likely. You know, I think there's a lot of us working very hard in our tiny little subculture to put our ideas out there and try and get them with traction. But we ultimately have a very rigid cultural elite mm. and increasingly rigid. And we also have kind of learned over the last year that it is well within the toolbox of our governments to adopt temporary kind of like 
militaristic solutions you know we've got a problem let's lock everybody inside for a year so if the environment throws up some shit at us in the next 10 years if there's some kind of warfare shit going down you know lock everybody inside for 10 years until the greenhouse gases clear up so you know this stuff is always in the back of my mind i mean what i almost like imagine us moving towards is something that resembles a little bit like the russian empire in the 19th century in the sense that there's a kind of like autocratic control regime but there's Mm -hmm. also a wildly productive cultural underground Mm -hmm. that produces in the same way that the russians kind of produce some of the best literature the best music ever in the 19th century despite having basically czarism and a very social social environment so i i almost think that that's that's probably the likely outcome at least mm. in the short term and then the work is kind of spreading that and building cultural institutions educational institutions that spread another way of being slowly mm-hmm. but ultimately because there's so much potential for chaos and i think at some point you know the solution to the chaos we would like it to be learning to surf the chaos in a creative and kind of enlightenment 2.0 meta modern way i think the much easier solution is well, clamp down on the chaos, mm. China yep. style. No, I, I, I'm very aware, uh, very afraid of that. I, I echo that, and so I, I, it's really weird because I hold this pessimistic and and uh, sort of dystopian view and this optimistic view, and and they, I'm trying to cultivate a, a, a positive dynamic process between them, but I but I hold them. Yeah, pretty yeah and I think that's the thing to do. It's like you have to on the one hand, stare into the, the abyss and on the other hand, kind of glare at the sun and be like, that's where we could go. Beautiful. Daniel, you mm-hmm. look like you had some thoughts. <laughs> uh, I, um, I completely agree that we're on the verge of some sort of moments which will, uh, yeah, for me, represent sort of an ontological Armageddon as in technological conditions and their influence on culture and people's habits, et cetera, with the addition of the geopolitical pressures and governments keeping control over people, et cetera, pressures that everyone mentions. And if you add to that, the Googles of this world and their relentless, you know, being larger than nation states at this point and their relentless drive obviously for power, it is as if culture is itself performing a decentralized Manhattan project whereby Soon it's an arms race, and soon there will be such a, a, tr- a vast alteration in lived reality and life worlds as a consequence of 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 the the convergence of exponential trends that you know pointing towards the end of the decade will somehow generate these these th- this this immanentization of the eschaton, mm. which mm. is in history the whenever it happened that someone wanted to make this vision real it was always very you know it doesn't end too well and and technically they're short-lived moments they're bursts of of energy not with many happy endings in there and i think that that and the singularity are this it is to bring down the ideal into the real world uh whenever men want to amenitize the asset um but this time it's happening on its own. Mm. Mm. And that's the weird part. And so for, from in my wildest ontological design fantasies, I sometimes start to speculate about what it could, what, what the future could look like. And, and, and I, what I think is going to be some sort of, you know, geopolitical struggle, struggle mediated by large technology companies where they interfere in every aspect of how we make sense into the, in the world, mm-hmm. these grammars with which we associate things. And they're going to just steam ahead, steamroll our, our behavioral imprints that are there from the past and just install a new software because they can, because the technology the and, the and the incentive is there. So, you know, in the same way that just, just to zoom in on that, that grammar, you know, there are the, the sacred part of our collective grammars are things like democracy, freedom, and, 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 and the more profane things about that grammar are things like a pharmacist using the lab coat and shaking someone's hand when you meet them. Um, these are things that will become design fodder tabula rasa canvases for uh, to be designed and uh, the thing is that there are the means to to imprint this it's going to be like alexander the large from that other movie by kubrick um i forget forget the name but it's going to be this sort of uh, 
very intense, the ability is there. And if the ability and the alibi and the will is there, I do expect it to somehow be 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 used by the Chinas or maybe by mm-hmm. the United States of this world. Yeah, no, it's very scary. The prognostic is not good, but the means are there. And so for me, in many ways, ontological design is also self-defense, hopefully. Mm. Hopefully, right. which is creating self-sustainable life worlds to kind of sustain this ontological Armageddon. Vladislav Surkov, Russian Russian uh, advisor to Putin and, and theater director, so he comes from the narrative world. He's got this this thing, this this short story called uh, Sky, No Sky, Without Sky, and it's a story about how. It's a very metaphorical story, but in it, the sky over his village falls down, and the debris kills his parents and his family. And then he becomes part of a group called the two dimensionals. Hmm. This to me uh, is metaphorically very plausible. Yeah. Obviously we are looking, we're predicting We're we're still a little bit far away from the singularity, mm-hmm. but to me it's plausible from the negative side. Mm-hmm. But again, it's the old story of, of negatively mapping the possibilities. So the ship invented the shipwreck electrocution was invented by electricity, but it also allowed for the light bulb. Right. Uh, and so what's, what, we're in, what we're facing really is uh, this antechamber before history and its long preparation mm. open up. Mm. Uh, old traditions speak about this all the time. We have, we have Russian Orthodox calling this the breaking of the Katekon and, and the unleashing of Gog and Magog and the Antichrist. Uh, revelation of Christians also says the same. Mm. Kurzweil says it's going to be a singularity that that will bring many good things. So, so it's, it's, it's anybody's guess at this point, no doubt. but what's not a guess. It's that it, in my opinion is that the means will be there yep. to perform this scale of things. Mm. And mm. to be honest, that's what I want to know. That's what that's, that's my, my, my object is that, okay, what's the how to, how right. can you guys do it? Because it will be possible to be done. Right. And somebody will do it. 